Welcome to the Deep Dive. This week, you shared some really fascinating material on vaginal breech birth. You know, often the automatic thought with breech baby bottom or feet first is, well, cesarean. But we want to dig into these sources today and really understand the, uh, the complexities around potentially having a vaginal breech birth. It seems less common but clearly still relevant. Absolutely. Yeah, the trend has shifted heavily towards cesareans for breach, that's true. But um, like your sources show, vaginal breach births do still happen. So understanding it, even if it's not the everyday scenario, is still pretty vital. Okay, so breach means baby's not head down. The sources mention external cephalic version, ECV first. Yeah, that's usually the first step recommended, where they uh, try to manually turn the baby head down from the outside. It often works. But if the baby stays breached, then you face that big decision. Right. And even the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists sounds quite cautious, saying planned vaginal breach may be reasonable. Exactly. May be reasonable under very specific conditions and hospital protocols. It's definitely not a blanket. Go ahead. Okay, so what are those key conditions? It sounds like the selection process is really strict. It really is. First, you obviously can't have other major issues like placenta previa mm -hmm. and things like uh, predicting if the baby fits the pelvis. It's actually harder than you might think. Public measurements aren't super reliable predictors. Interesting. So not just about size matching. What else? Uh, things like no prior C-sections is often a criterion, though maybe less strict in some places like France. Gestational age is important too, usually term, so 36, really 37 weeks or more. Preterm babies have that different head-to-body ratio, which is riskier for head entrapment. Right. The head coming last is the big challenge. Precisely. Also, spontaneous labor is generally preferred over induction, though some studies, you know, they didn't find huge outcome differences with induction, but the main advice is still against it generally. And the absolute non-negotiable seems to be the team and the setting. Oh, absolutely crucial. You need staff who are genuinely skilled and experienced in actually doing vaginal breech births. And you need the ability to do an emergency C-section, like right now. Full team, or ready, everything. Makes total sense. What about the type of breech? Does that matter? It does. Ultrasound needs to confirm it's frank breech, legs up by the head, or a complete breech, kind of sitting cross-legged. Footling breech, where a foot is down, that's usually a contraindication for a single baby because of the higher risk of the head getting stuck later. Okay. And the baby's size? Yeah. There's usually a weight range clinicians look for, maybe around 2,000 to 4,000 grams, something like that. Too big raises concerns about the shoulders or head getting stuck. And too small, well the body might slip through before the cervix is open enough for the relatively larger head. Also, critically, the baby's head can't be hyperextended, you know, looking upwards or stargazing. That's linked to potential injury. Wow. Okay. So many factors to line up perfectly. Exactly. And during labor itself, you need continuous heart rate monitoring because cord compression is a risk. Good pain relief, like an epidural, is often recommended too. It helps prevent pushing too early and provides anesthesia if needed quickly. And the actual delivery, it sounds like it requires specific maneuvers. Definitely. It's very hands-on, but also requires knowing when not to intervene. You need to avoid pulling on the baby, especially early on, as that can cause problems like the arms getting stuck above the head. There are specific ways to help deliver the arms if needed, like the love set maneuver and then the head. That's the final critical part. How is the head delivered safely? Usually using something like the Morisot Smelly Veet maneuver, which helps flex the baby's head, or sometimes specialized forceps like Piper forceps are used. The key is keeping the head flexed, not extended. And speed matters once the baby's body is out. Head entrapment sounds like the big worry, especially preterm. It's a serious, though thankfully rare, complication, especially if the cervix isn't fully dilated or with preterm babies. There are emergency maneuvers, medications to relax the uterus, but they all carry risks and need expertise. Sometimes, very rarely, even surgical options might be needed. Okay, this really highlights that while vaginal breech birth is possible, it's definitely not simple. It requires such specific circumstances, selection, and crucially skilled practitioners. Absolutely. It's a complex clinical decision weighing risks and benefits in a very specific context. And the skill factor is huge. Which really brings us back to that question. With cesareans being more common for breach, how do we make sure those essential skills for vaginal breach birth are maintained? For when it is the right or necessary choice. That's the ongoing challenge, isn't it? Balancing the trend towards cesareans.